Now, Emma is out these couple of weeks, but in, in her place is only an uh, honourable professor. Uh, Dr Kevin Curran is a professor of cybersecurity with the Ulster University at McGee. That's uh, quite the job title, Kevin. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, listen, good to see you. Um, robocalls, having a clue. W- what's happening here, Kevin? Well, uh, as we see at the moment, three out of ten calls that come to your home telephone line are from scammers or they're... <laughs> they're not from your loved ones and many people are reaching the end of their tether you know why are they keeping the landline even but of course it's usually tied in with your with your with your phone company deal um but of course th- there's first onion or a US- us based research firm and they predicted that that it'll rise from the current 30 percent up to 44.6 which is nearly half of all calls coming through will be scam calls or will be robo calls again just nuisance calls really which are affecting really everyone. There's and is it, are these the, the, the automated ones? Some the, of them are really stupid, Kevin. Yeah, the automated ones, but of course, uh, most of the ones we get now are from Microsoft for support or they're just scam calls. And again, the first minute of those are generally, um, it's um, a voice assistant which is speaking to you, very real, and asking you, of course, were you in an accident? And but, they, li- but they leave little pauses. They do, Andrew. Hello they're, there, yeah, pause. They're, they're incredible. We'd like to talk to you about your accident, pause. Yeah. You remember your accident. <laughs> you go on. Yeah, but that's really embarrassingly bad, some of them. So why would they bother, Kevin? Uh, well, well, you know, they just have to get a, f- a fraction of percentage of people. And again, that they're using, they're using the automated computer to do the first part of it so that they can be, in the meantime, trying to scam other people. Um, again, because there's only so many humans in those, you know, call centres as well. And you often want, you know, I mean, people ask, why don't the phone companies do more about it? Um, but it's not the easiest thing to solve, but also they could be doing more. Yeah. But it's in their interest, of course, to not block genuine calls. And of course, that they're trying to. Some robocalls are literally genuine. It's maybe when there's been an accident in the area or there's a school's been closed. Schools will, you know, use software which automatically dials parents and other, other things mm-hmm. again. It's used around the world. But that th- there is a solution, again, that they're finding that bas- basically going back to artificial intelligence, machine learning, which is able to scan to see if a particular phone number was identified calling hundreds or thousands of mm-hmm. n- other numbers again. But, but when I get the odd one on the mobile, you just delete it automatically or block it. Yeah, you can on the mobile, again, you should always go into your block calls and block that, blacklist that number. Oh, yeah. But of course, unfortunately, that the scammers will just, they've got a, you know, a pool of numbers they draw from. Nearly always landline from London 0208 yeah, nearly always yeah. in my case I'm the last year has been the London one 0208 yeah 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 okay uh, Snapchat and Amazon I still don't know what even Snapchat is uh, Kevin but that's the thing that you what you take a quick photograph and then it, the minute your mate opens it it disappears or what is it uh, yeah, I mean it, it, yeah, that, that's the essential selling point for Snapchat is the fact that it doesn't store messages and it doesn't store images and they disappear so again we're seeing ephemeral social media is called so again very very popular among young people they love their Snapchat. Again, I just see my son's Snapchat messages coming in, just the, the, who they're coming from. But of course, I can never see his Snapchat because everything disappears. Right. I have but, no but control over it. But this is Snapchatting it. a barcode. Exactly. So now Snapchat are teaming up with Amazon, the second trillion dollar company in the world, so that you can point your phone at, a, at an item um, or a barcode even, and then it will find that item and then you're able to click on the card which appears from Amazon and you're able to go in and complete your purchase in Amazon. But if you're taking a photograph of a book that you want Amazon to find for you, why don't you just buy the book that you've just took the photograph of? Uh, uh, the, book, the physical book? Yeah. If you're standing somewhere, I'd love to buy that wine because it's lovely. Uh, but the bottle of wine is there. <laughs> just buy yeah. the bottle of wine. Uh, yeah, of course, yeah. But of course, what you find quite often is Amazon undercuts the, the high oh, street yeah, sellers. Yeah, yeah. But also, the, the neat feature of this, and they're trying to prove it all the time, is you don't know what the item is. Or there's no barcode. So you point it at someone's shoes. It will identify that they're Ted Baker shoes, the 2018 version. Oh. And then bring up that item, that particular item on the website. Mm-hmm. Otherwise, you wouldn't know what they were. All right, then, uh, Alexa. I love talking about Alexa because it means I can uh, use it. This should work, shouldn't it? Alexa, Mark Patterson show. <laughs> Alexa, Mark Patterson show. <laughs> Listen. All right, Kev? Well, that should work, shouldn't it? Uh, yeah, a lot of people are there quite angry now. But <laughs> so she, whose name should never be spoken on air, aims to replicate human curiosity and insight using AI. So now that they've got this thing called Alexa Hunches, which is rolling out your Amazon devices again. So it tries to, do, especially when you've got connected smart home devices like locks and lights and electricity outlets, which are powered, where which you can say to Alexa turn on or turn off. But now it will, if it rec- it will learn your patterns. 
about when you turn the TV on, when you turned it off. And if you go to bed and it doesn't rec- it recognizes that you didn't turn it off, it will say to you, did you forget to turn the TV <laughs> off? So it's Alexa Hunches is trying to, yeah. to to be that companion that we all wish we You'd had. You'd use this, won't you? I, 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 well, it, I can't help if I have my Amazon. It, it's been built into it. So I would use it, yes. Do you think you'll ever disconnect? Will, will your brain ever be so peppered with this stuff? Because you've every gadget on the planet. Yeah, your but sons I, but I are very talented yeah. young digitalers. Will you ever disconnect, Kevin? No, never. No, no, no. I can't either. It's, it's part of my life. It's part of what I do. It brings, you know, I've got to be connected. But no, I couldn't. It's you too, couldn't? It's too useful to me. <laughs> yeah. All right, uh, Kevin, uh, very good. Listen, impartially, and I know sometimes you have, you're commercially associated, but impartially, what's the best gadget in your life? What is the one gadget, Kevin? that fundamentally transforms what you do personally, professionally? Oh, it's boring. I mean, it's my laptop. My laptop is my productivity tool, so I can do everything on the laptop. Phone, of course, for connection and everything else. I mean, a phone would be a close second, but really, when it comes to it, I could still communicate with my laptop, but I wouldn't be able to get as much work done on a phone. So I still, if I had to choose one device leaving my house, which is burning down, it would be my... Dell XPS 13. There you go. <laughs> Kevin, thanks for that. Uh, in for Emma this week, that's Professor Kevin Curran <coughs> from the Ulster uh, University. Uh, the latest in sort of digital concerns, online uh, stuff still to come, folks. A new festival. It's only a wee one there.